All right, I think it's working. We're live. I'm a little bit early. I'm finished, so I'm, I'm getting ready in good time. So I'll wait for a little bit and before I'm going to start this whole webinar and introducing myself and all of that. So, hey everyone, um, I hope there's going to be a bunch of people joining and everyone's going to have a lot of questions. My name is Inka and I'm a professional indoor skydiving coach, skydiving coach, yoga teacher, used to be a dancer and um, telling a bunch of my background so that you guys can also review the information that I'm giving during this webinar based on your knowledge of what I'm doing, what, what I used to do. It's always important to be a little bit critical on everything that we're learning. So I've been skydiving for 11 years now, tunnel flying for nine. And tunnel flying is my main gem. I am a world champion from 2015 and a World Cup winner from 2016 in indoor freestyle. And been coaching, I would say around 4,000 hours of body flying in a tunnel. So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk to you guys today about um, has to do with my personal experiences, not just me as a flyer, but me as a coach and me seeing people and their fitness limitations, limiting their progression or, you know, other issues that that might cause. So one more thing that I kind of want to explain so me as a body flying coach it's very i've been really intrigued by not just how your body works with the wind but how your body works i used to study in a university of applied sciences to be a dance teacher i didn't finish the degree but i did a bunch of studies there i've been doing a little bit of studying sports medicine studies in the university i'm on my second yoga teacher training so it's something that I'm really passionate about and I feel like it's one of my strengths as a teacher and I feel like it's something that I've really managed to give to people and kind of been able to progress people faster by understanding how their bodies work and how that's affecting their flying and their well-being in general. So fit to fly. It does not just mean being totally, completely ripped and physically capable in all possible ways. Um, I have a lot of people who I coach and everyone would usually, no one wants to progress slower. Everyone would like to progress a little bit faster usually than they are. Flying is expensive, tone flying is expensive, skydiving is expensive. And the quicker we learn things, the more we get to play with friends. Um, but what usually or very often hinders our progression or learning is um, physical limitations. And I don't mean anything severe now. I don't mean extremities during the whole conversation, basically. It's very minor, you might not be aware of kind of limitations in your flexibility and your strength. So they come together as mobility, your coordination, which is a big thing, or your balance. Spatial awareness is another thing. Um, and then when we have these kind of limitations, it's kind of putting a hold onto a progression and we're spending a lot of time trying to figure out these things in the airflow. It's like, how can I move my hips back and forth, but I cannot do it on uh, standing on the ground either. So I'm going to talk a bit about what kind of things are the most common things that I see. Um, what kind of things you could be doing if you're really motivated to boost your progression. And if you guys have any questions, please send me messages. 
Actually, I'm trying to figure out where. Yes, I guess that's where I see the comments. So if you have any questions, uh, please shoot me a message and I'll try to answer all of that. Flying is a physical activity. So the thing is like a certain amount of work and effort is always required. There is no magic pill to make you progress a lot faster. However, that work can be done partially outside of the airflow outside of your skydives, outside of your tunnel time. And for a lot of us, that makes a whole lot of sense because then we get more out of the skydives and the tunnel time that we're putting in, as I kind of already mentioned. It's about working smarter, though, not harder. Sometimes I get people asking, it's like, how can I do more? I keep stretching so much, but it doesn't work. It's not necessarily just about stretching. So, like I said, your mobility, which is your strength and your flexibility together, your coordination, so your ability to create movement, your understanding of your body, um, the fact that you could use your flexibility and your strength, that coordination, which comes into body awareness, and then your balance, your general sense of balance. Those are things that can really help you in your flying and those are things that are super easy to work on outside the tunnel when we say that someone is a fast learner we don't usually say someone's a fast learner because they have a lot of information about how to do things the correct way we usually say that they're a fast learner because they're really body aware they know their bodies they know how to move their bodies this kind of body awareness does not come just from it could, it could come just from busting out skydive after skydive after skydive, but you're going to end up doing a lot of skydives before you're in that level, right? That kind of body awareness usually comes from doing a lot of different things um, outside your flying time, a lot of different sports. It's surprising how many of us are carrying our bones and muscles with us all day, every day. And we cannot name a single one of them. So we're having a little pain here, but I, had, I, don't, I have no idea why that would be happening or a little bit of tension there, but I don't know what to stretch to really release that. So one thing in general, in addition to you being here today and listening to this, what I encourage to you is like, if you're interested in becoming a really badass body flyer, start getting more aware of a body and not obviously by moving it, but also by learning about it, right? The more you know, the easier it is for you to learn. For me, teaching people that have, let's say, a dancing background, man, it's super easy because I know exactly the verbals, how to explain them, certain moves, certain body parts. I, I know that they know the names of the body parts. They know the names of the muscles. They understand how to engage certain bits of their body. So... Um, that's definitely one thing. Start becoming more aware of your body. Start knowing and understanding your body more. Um, to get started before kind of the whole let's progress and let's become physically stronger and more aware, I'd like to point out a thing that mm, very often when we're flying, we're causing repet repetitive stress on certain parts of a body and not the others. Now imagine if you're doing six days a row of leading belly tracking jumps. So every time that you're in the airflow, you're always holding the same body position, the same kind of pressure, the same muscle activation. Just to neutralize this work and kind of keep your body healthy and maintain a good neutral healthy alignment you need to put in a little bit of effort otherwise that repetitive stress is slowly going to start doing some things it's going to make my chest maybe a little bit tighter because i'm always like this right it's going to start moving my shoulders because of that it might cause alignment issues in my hips so it's not just to improve but to stay healthy and maintain what i, I just said the neutral alignment. Another example that I could give to you guys is the tunnel flyer hips. 
you see a lot of tunnel instructors and it's a little bit a style thing as well but especially here in the state side um they're in facing a lot they're in face head up in face head down all day long and they tend to fly this with hips pushed up forward and when you start looking at these guys walking around the buildings they all have their hips pushed forward they're congesting their lower back and their flying causes this misalignment and now they're basically starting to make certain muscles in the body shorter certain muscles in the body longer and less strong and they're the the whole body is in an imbalance and then certain other things might be harder to learn or certain body positions could be really tricky to take so um to be fit to fly the first step is to start body conditioning start understanding what is the stress that you're putting on your body uh, when you're flying and what kind of things should you be doing to neutralize that right for me i use often the the metaphor of like imagine if your body was a different person if you would ask a different person to fly i don't know for me like coach five hours of tunnel flying a day for me i would want to give something back to them as a thank you for doing that for me so i feel like i have that responsibility towards my body too giving my body the body conditioning that it needs to be able to maintain healthy in terms of mobility so then obviously a huge thing about flying that it's not about just how how strong i am we're playing with an element but it is easier to teach a body with an athletic ability to fly and it's always more effortless for you to execute the required actions of any flying body position, any move that you're doing when it's less from your maximum capacity. So I never want to be maxed out in terms of strength or flexibility. When I have to use 100% of my strength or my flexibility when I'm flying, um, it's very, I, I, there's going to be a lot of tension. I cannot really be flying with that, what we're always looking for, that perfect in-between of like being strong but not stiff. The stiffness comes from being maxed out. So the more range I have, the further I can go without having to be maxed out. And then my body can produce movement in an easier manner. When I preach about flexibility and stretching to a lot of my students, uh, especially especially the non freestylers, the most common thing is like, well, why do I need to be flexible because of basic flying positions? Like they don't really require crazy mobility. So some of the reasons are already what I mentioned. It's you're maintaining your neutral alignment, not creating any postural issues for yourself. Um, but Another thing is like lack of flexibility is really limiting us from building strength. First of all, I can only be strong in the within the range of motion that I have, right? So if my arm can only go there, this is the only area where I can actually have strength. For me, when I have a bigger range of motion, if I build strength into all of that, um, I have a lot more that I can do with my body. The second thing is like the way your muscles are working. When one, one muscle gets shorter, the other one needs to get longer, right? Now, if I don't have, if, I, if I'm really stiff and I don't have a lot of flexibility, then it's harder for me also to contract muscles, uh, extremely contract muscles and to build strength. Um, what lack of flexibility also causes is that we might not be able to use such very, very simple body positions as a squat in a correct way. So this is a common flyer thing. This is maybe more men than it is women, but we're having that 
pushed forward hips. And then now I'm actively shortening my hamstrings all the time. And whenever I'm trying to um, basically fold my hips, right? I cannot do that because my hamstrings don't have the space. So now when I'm squatting down, I cannot stay in like a neutral alignment. And when I'm off that neutral alignment, what it does to my body is that there's a lot of muscles that I cannot be using the way I would like to. And I cannot find the kind of strength that I could potentially have in that body position. And the reason why I'm mentioning squat is that that's what we're kind of doing a lot of, that's our break body position in most of, uh, most of dynamic flying. So a lack of flexibility can really cause a lack of, um, what's the right term, La lack of ability to recruit muscles to work. The other end of the spectrum is being super, super flexible, but not having any strength. Oh, uh, you might have strength, but you have strength in that range of motion. Here I can be strong, but if the arm goes there, I cannot push it forward anymore against any pressure. This is another issue that then I meet more with women and a lot of the girls who want to get into freestyle and they're stretching, 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 and they're just stretching. But for me to be able to balance in the airflow and create pressure against the airflow, I need to be able to engage my muscles in that, so in that length and body position. So it's very common to just see kind of people flopping into splits, but then you, you cannot control it in any possible way. Uh, the wind is just flying you. Or the other thing is like when we go at our bellies and we become a huge shape because you don't have strong enough of a core to compensate the body position and, uh, and straighten out that super, super flexible back. So I'm giving some examples and I hope that anyone who's listening, who is listening to this or who will be listening to this, um, is going to start thinking it's like, what am I? You might not be the extremity of either. You might not be mega stiff or you might not be mega flexible. But you might have certain joints in your body. Let's say your shoulders are crazy flexible and lacking strength. And your hips might be really tight. Um, and this is what I mean by starting to become body aware. Uh, there is no universal answers to what do you need to do. Because... It depends on everyone's starting point, right? So now, even body position-wise, when we're flying, and this is another thing that I meet quite often because a lot of people are teaching just based on body positions. So if my neutral body position, because of some weird fitness and, and uh, strength flexibility limitations in my body, is that hips push forward, um, stance and if someone else has naturally a little bit of a curvy lower back but kind of sticked out a little fold in the hips these are both very common for us to become in a straight line in our bodies it's the opposite action for one of these people you would have to tell them to push their hips backwards to be straight and for the other one you would have to tell them to push their hips forward to be straight when we start moving our bodies and when we start doing more workouts and exercises and start getting more familiar with how our body works, what's our alignment in comparison to a neutral body alignment. We have information for these situations where there's a coach who's telling you, it's like, here, push your hips forward, push your hips forward. Maybe it's working for him. But for you, it's actually just making the problem worse because your hips are already forward. You should be going the opposite way. Um, so this is, in my opinion, like a super important thing. And when I was hosting some mobility workshops in the beginning of all these lockdowns, I was talking about it a lot. Start understanding that your normal doesn't mean neutral. And when you're aware of that, it starts becoming a lot easier for you to take the information that you're getting from your coaches and applying that to you. When you're jumping with someone 
and you're doing like six jump, some jumps a day with a coach that you've never met before in your life, they will see a lot if they have knowledge of how human bodies work, which in my opinion, anyone who teaches how to fly your bodies, you should have some of that. But if they do, they might see a little bit of what's going on in your body. Like, hey, I think we're like you're having a really, really, you know, stiff chest or you're having a really, really naturally wide open posture. But they might not see it either. So they're just giving like overall adjustments on how to fly your body and telling about the body positions that are good to use. And now you might end up in the situation that you're kind of taking the wrong out of it. Because you're like, oh, I need to open my chest more. But you were already there. So fit to fly, if you have the motivation to start working outside your skydives, outside your tunnel time, to be fitter, stronger flyer. Um, I cannot kind of like enhance enough how important the personal responsibility there is of having knowledge. I've been hosting some yoga classes online, which have been really cool. There's been a lot of flyers showing up on my Zoom classes, and there's going to be more coming. And um, you can come and join a yoga class and do all the poses. But you're going to need me the next time as well to do the same yoga practice if you don't gather information for yourself. If you start understanding why am I doing this with my hips in this body position, then you can do that by yourself as well. Um, do, do, no one's got any questions or I don't know where I see them. So a little bit about my story at this point. So when I used to be a dancer, I was dancing professionally when I started flying and in dancing you're doing, I would be doing eight, 12 hour days of most of that time moving your body. It's, it's pretty insane. So I was super fit. I was always used to using my body and working out. And then when I went kind of more full on into flying all my dance, like I didn't have my daily classes anymore. And in the beginning of a flying, when I was still dancing and started flying, I was progressing really fast. I was used to copying body positions. That was one, definitely like the visual learning. But the other thing was really understanding my body, like understanding how each of the movements that were asked from me were working. When I stopped dancing, there was maybe like a year that I, I didn't really do much of anything outside of just flying, 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 because that's what I was hungry for. I started noticing the change, I, I did not have the same connection with my body. I did not have the same awareness anymore. I was not learning that fast. The, the little body position changes were not that easy to make anymore. I didn't feel as strong, obviously. So eventually kind of yoga and a bunch of circus and other fun kind of stuff came along. But it was a it was a pretty drastic change and the feeling that I had in my body and the feeling that I had using my body, it was a huge, huge difference. And anything that I have done in terms of freestyle, like when I started flying freestyle in a tunnel, I was really the stiffest that I've ever been in my life. Because I had stopped dancing, I was not really doing flexibility work, and then I started training for the first competition. So when I'm watching my first world championships routine now, it's a little bit painful because my splits look absolutely terrible. But then I started working out. I started doing a lot of yoga. And I really, for me personally, my training is doing a period where I'm doing more flexibility, more stretching, still doing a lot of movement. So it's not just relaxed, passive stretching. And then I'm building more flexibility. And when I know that my flexibility is progressed, then I get back into doing a little bit more of strength training, still mobility, still both, but the emphasis is more on the strength. Then when I start seeing those changes in my body, I go back into flexibility. Those two things are really hard to work on at the same time when we're talking about really, really extreme advanced flexibility. 
For most people, what we need is mobility. There is a bunch of mobility tests online. I'm hosting them also on some of my mobility workshops. So hopefully I can I can put out a few of those workshops soon. And if anyone's interested in joining, you can come and you can literally test if your body has a healthy mobility. Right? So if the certain joints that are supposed to be moving in your body are moving the way they should for not to be a professional athlete, to be healthy, right? And that's a good start. And if you have any issues there, you definitely need to do some work, not just for your flying, but uh, for your overall well-being. So when you're at that level, when you're kind of looking for that healthy mobility, that everything is your body is balanced and you can keep a neutral alignment that's keeping your body uh, in a better shape, mobility like you can work on both things at the same time by by doing mobility work workouts so this is something where we are going through body positions where i am lengthening my muscles but i'm never passive there so there's all the time engagement going on at the same time yoga is really good like vinyasa flow yogas that i'm moving would be something that i mentioned not just because it has to be yoga but because um it's a type of workout that's easy to find anywhere in the world where you go. And it really serves well all of those things, your strength, your flexibility, your mobility, um, your balance and your coordination. So another thing or kind of way I would like to explain to you guys why I'm, I feel like all of this matters so much is Like I said, you don't need crazy flexibility to create the normal body positions that we're using for flying. But, however, let's say that um, like it affects the ability for me to isolate certain body parts. If my chest is really tight, when I'm trying to open it up, it will mostly see, most likely release my core as well. Because I cannot just move this area, right? I'm going to have to bring something else with. And the small adjustment that I intended to do is now causing a lot bigger domino effect in my body. If my shoulders are really tight and I cannot move them back and forth, I'm most likely going to be moving my chest with. Right? Um, the same thing with your hips. You're going to be taking your torso with or you're going to be taking your legs with. So, surprisingly... The fact that you have more mobility in your body is actually resulting to the thing that the, the fine tuning, the micro adjustments are a lot easier to do. To isolate. Um, no questions, anyone. <laughs> One thing that I get asked often when I'm coaching is like, so how much do I need to do? How much work do I need to do? Um, this is not a workout, so I'm not going to start showing you guys poses or anything like that. If you're interested in that, hit me up on Facebook or hit me up on Instagram and join some of my yoga classes in the future. And then I can actually run you through workouts. But how much? Well, the answer is obviously we need to see a change, right? That is different to everyone. You can also be doing too much, but you need to find the amount of strength and flexibility work that you start feeling different in your body. You notice that that mobility is increasing. You have better coordination, uh, better balance. So you need to see a change. Change is very crucial in your uh, fitness work in general because if I'm always doing the same thing on and on, if I'm always lifting the same weight, the same amount of times, my body gets used to it. So it's not building my muscles the same way that it did the first few times that I did it. So changing up the activities that I'm doing, changing up uh, the resistance or how long is the run that I'm doing? How many sit-ups am I doing? Am I doing that with weight or without? And it doesn't mean that it needs to be changed for more. Sometimes you also need to do less, right? So 
when your own work, when you're working out, think of that, start paying attention. If you're kind of like getting just stuck with like a habit that you're always doing the same stuff. And then, like I said, you'll notice very quickly if whatever is you're doing is efficient. If there's a change, it works. If nothing is changing, if you've kept training for a few weeks and nothing is changing, you don't feel any difference, then it doesn't. So you need to change something. It's the same as in flying. We're always trying to do the thing that feels right. But when the thing that feels right is not right, we need to do something that feels wrong to make it right. <laughs> and that's when it gets tricky. But you rather want to do a hundred different mistakes than the same mistake a hundred times. So when you're figuring out what kind of work I to do, you rather want to try a little bit of this, a little bit of that, than just keep doing one thing that does not work for you and not getting anywhere with that but feeling that you put in the effort. Um, my general advice, especially when you're flying in a tunnel, is that demand it from your coach. Demand an understanding of how your body works. Um, not a lot of people have it because, and I'm not trying to point out fingers, I'm just saying that like our sport is really new and a lot of the people that are coaching body flying come from an instructor background. And when they learn to be instructors, it's a completely different kind of training. You're not really trained to understand the mechanics of a body. You're trained to take in first timers and keep them safe, to keep the sport flyers safe. Um, but then as you get better and you're flying, you're usually going to start teaching people. And then if you did not have any kind of background in the sports, maybe you have no idea of the basic functions in the body. And without any bad intentions, you could be teaching something that's really harmful for someone because you're teaching them, um, let's use this example, the thing of turning out your feet when you're in face carving, right? It's not a harmful thing as itself, but when we're doing it in a wrong manner that we're only turning the feet but not our knees um that is putting a lot of pressure into a knee joint and when you do that over time more and more eventually that's going to be a knee surgery and it's really for me personally it's a really important thing to take the responsibility if i'm telling people how to use their bodies i need to I need to know that I'm not causing damage to their bodies. So if you are feeling strain in your body after your flying sessions, ask about it, talk to your coach and, you know, start also building awareness of whether who you're learning from has the knowledge and if they don't seek it and it could not necessarily mean that you have to, or it doesn't have to mean that you need to change your coach, but it could also be you taking more responsibility and starting to find things online. There's so much, especially now after Corona, there's so many workout classes. There's so many different kinds of uh, training programs that you can sign up that actually teach you about body mechanics. And then you are not only progressing yourself faster, but you're keeping yourself healthier. Uh, you're keeping your body more fit for flying or any other kind of activities. Um, and it feels kind of good to also be able to carry that responsibility yourself that you're not just relying on someone else blindly. Because after all, this is not just about flying. This is your home in this life. So I really encourage for anyone who does anything physical to start learning stuff about that so now another personal experience or a few of them um i feel like i've been saved from so many injuries by being a spaghetti there has been several times that i have my someone's crashed into me and my arm is twisting into a strange direction but because my body has a range of movement or the range of motion i'm okay I might feel a little bit, I have a bruise or something like that, but my shoulder's not fucked. If you didn't have that range there, you could be looking at a, a lot longer recovery from that same thing. Or if you're having a funky landing and you end up be going full Scorpio and your feet hit your head. 
for some people you're pulling maybe something in your back or but for some some people that can cause severe damage on your spine so one huge thing about like especially if you're doing a lot if you're flying a lot if you're like skydiving a lot um it's uh, like the boys used to say it's for the hits and the chicks so you work out so that you're you're able to take the hits and you're able to take all those um little things because that happens it's extreme sport but without actually injuring yourself and i think that's what all of us would prefer to stay in one piece and and not get hurt in the sport that we love so much so i know some of you guys were probably uh hoping that this was going to be like hey if you do this move and that move uh, so many times a day, it's really going to build your core. Uh, like I said, this is not about that. This is more like making you think of how does your fitness level affect your flying. No, everyone's being a little bit shy with the question. If you do have anything that you want to ask from me personally, uh, you don't want to write it here to everybody, then... Um, please shoot me a private message on Facebook or Instagram if you're interested on doing any of the yoga classes or any of the flyers mobility workshops that I'm doing online the same thing just message me and I'll hook you up with whatever is coming I don't have anything scheduled right now but I'm getting back into that and everything's through zoom so that it's easy for anyone to participate um, there is a bunch of really good content, um, online to get you started on, like I said, yoga is great. So if you want to start yoga, you don't know where to start from, check out Allo Moves. That's a really, really cool website. It has some amazing teachers, has a lot of different style of workouts. So no matter what your current skill set or level is or what kind of stuff you're looking for whether it's workouts or more of the knowledge you'll find it from there and some of the workouts are also more or some of the yoga classes are more workout style than their like yoga flows um there is a few things that you should check out on instagram that's called move you it's a cool program that teaches you a lot about the human body and how the body mechanics basically and you can also check with them a lot about how your body's working. How are you in relation to what you should be able to do? And you might have shocking. It's like, wow, I never realized that my, I don't know, wrists are that bad or my ankles don't move the way they should. Or, uh, and uh, one cool workout program that I've been checking out a little bit is also called Phase 6. You can find them on Instagram too. So they have a lot of mobility workouts that are really cool stuff. They're kind of like mixed with yoga, um, maybe some martial arts style workouts too, but they're pretty awesome. So I would definitely check on that. Um, no one, no questions. Oh, I was hoping that someone's going to ask at least something silly. If you want to ask anything else, it doesn't have to be about fit to fly. It can be anything about flying. It can be anything uh, about me. <laughs> it can be anything about, let's say, freestyle. Um, feel free to do that too. Mm -hmm. What else? I think I'm pretty good with preaching about this. It's <laughs> and I I get kind of how would I say it? I know I'm talking about this a lot. Anyone who's jumped with me or done um tunnel flying with me knows that I'm talking about this and really speaking for it, but I've just seen the results of it so many times. Like I coach a lot. I I, I don't think there's any other woman who's done as much tunnel coaching that I have and very a handful of men only as well. So it's like I've had a lot of students. I travel around the world as well. And I'm also coaching in several different disciplines, freestyle and dynamic. And 
I feel like when I start talking about this, a lot of people think that I'm talking about people being limited, that they cannot do freestyle things. But it's not that. Like, it's a very dude thing to think. It's like, oh, I don't need to be flexible. So I don't want to do the splits ever. I don't need you to do the splits. It's for the people who want to do the splits. But if you want to be a really good, powerful, dynamic flyer, or fly any movement in the sky, you need to have a certain ability to move your body. And that requires a certain amount of flexibility that, according to my observation, after 4,000 hours of coaching in a tunnel, it's a lot of people are lacking that. Hamstrings, your hip flexors, those are the two problem areas. Have strings mainly for the reason that we're always stretching them wrong. The shoulders and the fact that we are not connected to our spinal movement, so we cannot really isolate that. That's the four bits that I would look into your ability to internally, externally rotate your shoulders and how far you go with that. Um, and your hips, your hip flexor flexibility, your hamstring flexibility, and then the spine. You can Google some ability tests. You can actually find them from Alamoves. Or you can message me if you're interested in doing um, a little session to, to test that out. But that's the, the four most common problem areas. Um, yeah, some sometimes you... And I've been lucky enough to also kind of meet these people that have a mad talent. And sometimes there's flyers like that. They're just kind of like extremely talented. They have no background in anything. And they can just do everything like this. But out of the thousands of skydivers that I've met, how many are in that boat? I don't know. You can count them with one hand fingers. So those people are not always the best reference. I've never... Consider myself a highly talented person. I've considered myself a hard worker. And a, being a hard worker has made me a fast learner. But yeah, that's two different things. And I think it's really important to acknowledge the difference as well. When someone has a 15 year background in gymnastics and then they come and start flying and they're awesome and they pick up everything really fast. So we call them talented. That's not talent, that's work. But when we call them talented, then someone who is not talented or considers themselves not talented thinks that I'm not going to be able to learn that stuff because uh, I don't have that talent. But that's not talent. That's the thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of spent in the, in the gymnastics training to, you know, build all of those abilities in your body. So the great thing about that, you don't need thousands of hours. You need way less. You just need to work smarter, not harder. But... The great thing about understanding that, that not everyone that's good is talented is that, that it leaves the keys in your hand. If you want to get good, you can't. You just need to be willing to put the work in. Cool. I think that's about it. Like I said, contact me if you have anything to ask. Um, maybe we'll even host a little yoga class here through NZ Aerosports a little bit later. Um, if a lot of people are interested in doing that, but thank you for listening. I hope there were some things that I said that started waking thoughts in your mind and started motivating you to maybe make changes or start doing things differently. And, um, the world is a little bit crazy right now, but I really hope to see a lot of you guys, uh, as soon as possible out there skydiving or tunnel flying. Stay safe.